Coming up now in your spoiler-free wrestling news rundown, we've got reactions to Cody Rhodes wrestling with a torn peck at Hell in a Cell. We also have injury updates on Brian Danielson, Scorpio Sky, and CM Punk. Multiple wrestlers are now done with Impact Wrestling, and we have even more wrestling news and notes. By the end of this video, you will be completely up to date with everything making headlines in the world of wrestling today, but with none of the spoilers. Subscribe to Spoiler Free Wrestling for all your wrestling news. Well, we have to talk about Cody Rhodes wrestling in the main event of WWE's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view on Sunday with a torn pectoral muscle. And WWE had announced on Sunday that Rhodes suffered the injury while weight training and that it was a complete tear. It had been completely torn off the bone. And that's important because the word going around is if it had been a partial tear, he would not have been allowed to perform in the match because he could have made the injury worse. But with a complete tear, with it being torn off the bone, it can't get worse than that. The injury is as bad as that injury could get. So evidently the doctor said you're fine to perform it's going to hurt a lot but it's not like you can make the injury worse and so that is what he did and to the surprise of many he ended up having a really good match with seth rollins despite the injury now the website fightful has put together a list of some reactions to cody's performance on social media they are up on your screen now you can see that joey janela wrote this is unreal cody rhodes is an animal get well soon Brian Myers writes, Absolute Warrior Cody Rhodes. Renee Paquette expressed that she was very concerned about Cody's arm. Shane Taylor tweeted out that gif of the kid giving a tip of his hat to Cody Rhodes for his performance. Sean Spears writes, You can't teach heart. And former WWE writer Brian Gewertz had a very interesting take on it. This is what he wrote. With so much content, it's easy for even great things to be quickly disposed of and forgotten about. This one won't be. Congrats, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. It didn't come easy, but I finally forgive Cody for putting that bag over Kermit the Frog's head. I don't know what he's referring to with the Kermit the Frog comment, but the rest of it I think is very true. People will always remember this. This is going to be a legacy match for Cody Rhodes. Carmelo Hayes writes, Cody with just a flexing bicep. Kayla Braxton writes, okay, so it's official. Cody Rhodes isn't human. Jordan Grace says that Cody Rhodes should be on the cover and number one in the official top 500 PWI rankings. TJ Wilson writes nothing but respect for Cody Rhodes. And then his wife, Brandy Rhodes, writes, Liberty, that's their daughter, better not ever tell me I can't. I'm going to have this match queued up faster than she can finish her sentence. Never imagined he would be able to finish that match and win. Now, Cody Rhodes is scheduled to have surgery for the injury on Thursday. It's not clear if he will be on Raw or not. But then after the pay-per-view ended in a sort of dark segment that didn't make it to the actual broadcast, he cut a promo and spoke to the live crowd in the audience and said that performing on the show was solely his decision. He said, I'm sure I'm going to explain things a little further tomorrow. I will be very brief. No one convinced me with a torn pack to come out here. It is solely my decision. You would have had to literally kill me from staying away from this ring. Ten times out of ten, I would have made the same decision. Going on last, I'll stay in arena in Chicago. You paid your money. You guys have believed in me and you didn't have to. Please know from the bottom of my heart, I believe in you. We are going to finish this thing. Thank you all very much. Have a great night, and I love you. Thank you. So Cody Rhodes putting on the performance of his lifetime, something uh, a match that is always going to be talked about, I think, for him, and something which Vince McMahon and WWE will likely not forget either. It, it does seem to be the kind of thing that Vince McMahon is impressed by, such a, similar to Triple H finishing that match with a torn quad. So typical recovery time for a torn pack is about four to six months. And you can bet when Cody Rhodes returns to WWE, he is going to be treated as a megastar. Now, Cody Rhodes is far from the only wrestler to be injured recently. A lot of top stars are dealing with injuries. Two of them are Brian Danielson and Adam Cole. Neither of them have wrestled since the double or nothing pay-per-view eight days ago from this recording. 
Cole was scheduled to be in a 10-man tag team match on Dynamite last Wednesday, but he was removed from the match after Tony Khan announced that he was injured following his match with Samoa Joe at Double or Nothing. So as for Danielson, he is also said to have been injured at Double or Nothing, but the nature of his injury is not known. Brian Alvarez addressed both their injuries on Wrestling Observer Radio. Here is what he had to say. He said, I was told that Danielson is out one to two weeks and probably no Cole until Forbidden Door. They're going to let him rest up. So with Cole, it sounds like he's just a little banged up from wrestling a lot, as Adam Cole does. He wrestles very frequently on AEW. And with Danielson, he's got something and he's out one to two weeks, but the nature of either injury is not known. <laughs> Keeping with the theme of injuries, Scorpio Sky also revealed that he believes he suffered some type of muscle strain on Rampage when he was defending the TNT Championship against Dante Martin. He took to social media and had the following to say, I went into last night's match with my knee bothering me, and unfortunately in the opening minutes I strained a muscle that goes from my knee up through my groin. My right leg was useless from then on. Despite that, wrestling in SoCal felt amazing even on one leg. Hopefully nothing serious, and I'll be back to defend again soon. So currently what is known is that he is waiting on the results from some tests to determine the extent of the injury, and then we'll know more. With all the injuries in wrestling recently, perhaps none is bigger than AEW world champion CM Punk. He is out of action for an undetermined length of time. He has either a broken bone in his foot or his leg. So it wasn't really clear what was going to happen with the title on Rampage, but AEW would send out some press releases over the weekend. And here is what we know. So CM Punk is not relinquishing the AEW World Championship. He is still the champion. But in his absence, AEW is going to crown an interim champion. That champion will be determined by way of a sort of mini tournament. And what's going to happen is on Dynamite on Wednesday, there will be a Battle Royal. No no participants announced for the Battle Royal as of yet, but there will be a Battle Royal with the winner going on to face number one contender John Moxley later that night on the same show. Then the winner of that match will go on to the Forbidden Door pay-per-view on June 26th and face either Hiroshi Tanahashi or Hiroki Goto. Goto and Tanahashi will square off at New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion on June 12th, and the winner will go on to the Forbidden Door, and then whoever wins the match at Forbidden Door will be the interim champion and will likely face CM Punk when he returns to action. And we've actually got betting odds up already on who will end up the AEW interim champion. Those odds are up on your screen right now. So you can see John Moxley is the favorite. He's a minus 150 favorite. After him, Hangman Page, Brian Danielson, MJF, all with uh, plus 300 odds to become the AEW interim champion. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi at plus 500. I would think that he would be a, a bigger favorite than either Page or Danielson or MJF. Adam Cole at plus 1,200. Eddie Kingston at plus 2,200. Chris Jericho at plus 2,500. Miro at plus 4,000. Wardlow at plus 4,000, and Hiroki Goto, who only needs two wins to become the AEW interim champion. He doesn't have to wrestle in a battle royal. He's a plus 5,000 uh, underdog. Nobody giving Hiroki Goto much of a chance to win the AEW interim world championship. <laughs> We have an update on the ongoing situation between Kota Ibushi and New Japan Pro Wrestling. New Japan Pro Wrestling has announced the penalties that they are giving to three people involved in this situation, those being New Japan President Takami Obari, Kota Ibushi, and someone who's being referred to only as the official. Now, we've named who this person is in previous videos, but New Japan Pro Wrestling is omitting uh, this person's name from their press releases for fear that they would be harassed. So we're going to do the same. But this official had been an assistant to Gato in terms of uh, booking responsibilities, but they are now being transferred to another position within the company. So they will no longer have anything to do with the booking of New Japan Pro Wrestling. So Kota Ibushi is not going to have to deal with this person again. So all three receive a 10% pay reduction from July to September, 
and the official has been moved to another part of the company. We will keep you up to date with everything going on with Kota Ibushi and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Bushi Road announced on Monday that for the first time ever, there's going to be a joint show involving New Japan Pro Wrestling and wrestlers from stardom. Of course, both companies are owned by Bushi Road, but this is the first time that they're going to really have a joint event. We've seen some stardom wrestlers uh, wrestle in uh, preliminary matches on the Tokyo Dome show, but this is going to be a joint show between the two promotions for the first time ever on November 20th in Tokyo. Here is what New Japan Pro Wrestling wrote about this show. For the first time ever, NJPW and Stardom will combine forces for a joint card in Tokyo's Ariaki Arena. Oh, I'm sorry for mispronouncing that. Newly constructed for the Tokyo Olympics in 2021, the 15,000-seat venue will be playing host to both companies for the very first time for this landmark event. Special Stardom showcases have highlighted Russell Kingdom pre-shows as well as Russell Grand Slam and MetLife Dome in 2021. Stardom was part of the main card at Wrestle Kingdom 16 Night 2 on January 5th, but now both companies will present their best for a special joint card. What will happen on November 20th? New Japan Pro Wrestling has also announced the full card for the Dominion show on June 12th. Here are the matches scheduled for that show. We will see Tenzan, Master Wato, and Taguchi team up to take on the United Empire's TJP, Francesco Akira, and Aaron Hanari in the opening contest. The second match will see Naito, Bushi, and Best of the Super Juniors winner Haramu Takahashi take on Bullet Club's Ace Austin, El Fantasmo, and Taiji Ishimori. Of course, Ace Austin joining Bullet Club on the final night of the Best of the Super Juniors on June 3rd. We'll also see Toru Yano take on Doc Gallows in singles competition. That should be interesting. In the fourth match, we will see the Never Openweight Six-Man Tag Team Championships on the line as the Suzuki-Goon team of Kanemaru, El Desperado, and Zack Sabre Jr. will take on House of Torture's Evil Show and Yujiro Takahashi. We will see the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships on the line as the United Empire's Jeff Cobb and Great Okan, the former champions, will challenge the current champions, Bad Luck Fale and Chase Owens from Bullet Club. As previously mentioned, we will see Hiroshi Tanahashi take on Hiroki Goto, with the winner going on to the Forbidden Door to face the winner of John Moxley versus a Battle Royal winner to determine the new AEW Interim World Champion. We will see a KOPW trophy match between Shingo Takagi and Taichi. For the Never Openweight Championship, Tama Tonga defends against Carl Anderson in a battle of original Bullet Club members. Of course, only Carl Anderson is in that group now. Tama Tonga kicked out of Bullet Club last year. For the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship, we will see a triple threat match pitting Juice Robinson versus the returning Sonata versus Will Ospreay. And in the main event, Kazuchika Okada defends the, defends the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship against Jay White. Something big is going on as it concerns Stephanie McMahon and WWE. So she announced recently that she was off taking a leave of absence to focus on her family. However, it appears that there might be more to this story brewing. So an interview came out with Business Insider where someone from WWE spoke to Business Insider under the condition of anonymity to basically say that the company was not seeing growth under Stephanie McMahon and the decision was made to remove her from her role. So this isn't a case of, or perhaps isn't a case of Stephanie McMahon just taking time away and more of a case of Stephanie McMahon actually being removed from her position. So here is what the anonymous source said to Business Insider regarding Stephanie McMahon's leave of absence. They said, family or not family, we've got to get the right people in place. We weren't seeing that growth. When someone is moved out of a company, it's usually the result of something not working. We took stronger control of that a few months ago. And a lot of people have brought up that during his appearance on the Pat McAfee show in March, Vince McMahon talked a little about having expectations of his family that they weren't living up to. He said, I've probably expected more from my family members than other employees. You have to do the right thing for the business. If this person isn't working out, they shouldn't be part of the company. And at the time, I think a lot of people were taking those comments 
as directed towards Shane McMahon. Remember, there had been a problem over Royal Rumble weekend regarding Shane McMahon's behavior backstage, and he has been gone from the company ever since, although he did show up at the Hall of Fame. But perhaps Vince was talking a little bit more about things going on behind the scenes regarding his daughter, Stephanie. Also, Dave Meltzer posted on the Wrestling Observer board, so the the message board that they have for the Wrestling Observer subscribers, And he wrote that regarding Stephanie's uh, leave of absence, he wrote, there's a much bigger story here. The company outright wanted to bury her here. Something happened after she left clearly. The company did a total 180 on her about two weeks after she left. They never even did that for Barrios and Wilson. So something is going on regarding Stephanie McMahon in WWE, or at least it appears that way. Sammy Guevara and Ty Conti, everyone's favorite couple, announced over the weekend that they are now engaged. It looks like Sammy Guevara popped the question in Paris by the Eiffel Tower. But perhaps the biggest news is Nyla Rose's tweet about it. She wrote in response to Ty Conti's uh, tweet announcing their engagement. Rose wrote, damn, she got to see the tower. Wonder if she got a pearl necklace too or just that gorgeous ring. Nyla Rose is pretty funny. Kenta returned to New Japan Pro Wrestling at the finals of the Best of the Super Juniors. He was introduced by Jay White. However, he didn't wrestle on the show. He was just in the corner for his Bullet Club teammates. But now Kenta has posted to Twitter saying that the doctor has given him permission to return to the ring. He's not scheduled for a match at New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion, but it looks like Kenta is going to be back in action shortly. Rock hard Juice Robinson had to miss the best of the Super Juniors final night. He was scheduled to have a singles match against Tomoaki Hanma. Now, as of this writing, he is still expected to perform at Dominion on June 12th and defend the IWGP United States Championship against both Will Ospreay and Sonata. Sonata returning to action as well. He had been out with a fractured orbital bone. But uh, as of this writing, Juice Robinson is expected to defend that title at Dominion. (laughs) AEW Women's World Champion Thunder Rosa missed both of the promotions shows in California last week, both the Dynamite in Los Angeles on Wednesday and the Rampage in Ontario, California on the Friday. It is being reported by PW Insider that she was not feeling well, and that's why she was not on the shows. They reported that word making the rounds is that Rosa was at the taping but wasn't feeling well and was sent home to convalesce by the company's doctor. Now, she did appear on Friday's Busted Open radio. She wasn't in the studio, however, and so there is currently no timetable for when Thunder Rosa will return to AEW. And some sad news to report, but Melanie Pillman who was the wife of Brian Pillman and the mother of Brian Pillman Jr. She passed away on June 1st. It was Brian Pillman Jr. who announced uh, her death last Thursday. He wrote on Twitter, Thank you, Mom, for bringing me into this world and for trying your best. You are my number one fan. Rest in peace. I love you. So condolences go out to everyone in the Pillman family or just anyone impacted by Melanie Pillman's death. We have two departures from Impact Wrestling to speak about. The first is 34-year-old W. Morrissey. W. Morrissey finished up with the promotion at the last set of tapings. It's unclear whose decision it was for him to leave the company. However, the 34-year-old is said to have impressed a lot of people in WWE after his performance Uh, wrestling Wardlow on AEW Dynamite recently. So it could be that W. Morrissey's got an offer on the table and could end up somewhere else shortly. However, that's just speculation. What we do know is that he's gone from Impact Wrestling. Another name gone from Impact Wrestling, at least for the time being, is Jay White. It was reported this week that with uh, his responsibilities in Japan increasing, it's not clear if White's going to be able to attend a lot of Impact Wrestling tapings. So he is essentially gone from the promotion for the time being as well.
And Ring of Honor is expected to be back on pay-per-view in July. According to a report from Fightful Select, AEW talent have been told that ROH Death Before Dishonor is being planned for the weekend of July 23rd, and the event is expected to take place in Lowell, Massachusetts. This would be the first card since April 1st Super Card of Honor, which was the first show under the new ownership of Tony Khan. So Ring of Honor expected back on pay-per-view this summer. And finally, let's go over the lineups for the shows on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then we will be back at you with another video on Thursday. So on Monday, WWE will be in the Rush Center in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Absolutely nothing has been announced for this show, and it's not confirmed that Cody Rhodes will be there either. Then on Tuesday night, NXT 2.0 will be in the Performance Center. We have three matches announced for Tuesday's show. It will be Roxanne Perez versus Tiffany Stratton in the finals of the Women's NXT Breakout Tournament. We will see Josh Briggs versus Von Wagner and Tatum Paxley versus Alba Fire. Then on Wednesday, AEW presents an episode of Dynamite from the Cable Dahmer Arena in Independence, Missouri. Three matches have been announced for the show, the first being the Battle Royal, which will determine who faces Jon Moxley later in the night. We will also see Hangman Adam Page take on David Finley in singles competition. And in what is most likely the main event of the show, John Moxley will take on whoever wins the Battle Royal earlier in the show to earn the right to go to Forbidden Door and challenge for the AEW Interim World Championship. And with that, you are completely up to date with everything that's making headlines in the world of professional wrestling, but with none of the spoilers. Subscribe to Spoiler Free Wrestling for all your wrestling news.